Seeking God first. Seeking God first. Who knows the Bible verse that comes from? Matthew 6. 33. <laughs> Matthew 6, 33. What does it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Boom. All right, gold star for Kendra. I don't actually have gold stars, so you're just going to have to deal with me saying gold star. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you applause and thumbs up. I love it. Um, and all these things shall be added unto you. What are all these things? You <laughs> The things of the kingdom. Oh, Ooh. that's loud. So uh, if you have your Bible with you, which I hope so. Hopefully you're at home or, or near a Bible or have your phone near you or something. Open up to Matthew 6. We're going we're gonna to dive in a little bit. I'm going to just kind of jump straight to it. But we need to know what all these things that are going to be added to us when we seek. Um, tonight's discussion is going to be uh, the reward of seeking him. So uh, every week we went through and we did, uh, and I don't know the order of all of them, and I don't remember all of them, so Chelsea, I already see you smirking. Um, but seeking God first, seeking him with our service, seeking him in our relationships, and, and seeking him in different ways. And tonight we're talking about the reward of seeking him. So we learn how to seek him in all that we do. We want to seek him first and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto us. But what is it? What what? what's getting added unto us. And so um, we're going to, I'm going to read real quick and just kind of summarize. Um, this comes from Matthew six, like we said, and uh, the subsection, you know how like in your Bible things are, are broken up into little different topics in most Bibles. Um, mine has it broken up from 25 to 34 is one subsection that says, do not worry. Um, and just to give you the, the short version, it's, you know, Hey, don't worry about what clothes you're going to wear. Don't worry about where your food's coming from. God cares about the birds and he feeds them. How much more does he care about you? God, you know, cares about the grass and it gets thrown into fire. How much more does he care about you? And so it says, don't worry about these things. God knows they're important, but seek him first and all these things will be added unto you. So all these things is talking about our clothing, our food, our necessities, the things we need, the things we worry about. All those things will be added unto us. So um, real quick, I know most of you from conversations, um, but I, I won't admit to knowing everybody, much less on a, on a deep level. So I'm going to give you a little background about me before I really feel like I can tell you um, what seeking him looks like in your own life and what the reward of that can be in your own life. Um, a lot of you know me as that guy that shows up and sings on Monday nights, um, but I am also the worship pastor at Life Church at Ardsley Park, which uh, some of you might know Lexi and J.B. Robinson. Um, he's one of the other pastors on staff. Uh, been there for a little over a year now. Um, and I would just kind of want to share a little bit of my relationship um, with God, with you, uh, so we can kind of understand this passage in, in a personal way together. Um, I'm 27 years old. I'm from Panama City, Florida, and moved here after Hurricane Michael about a year and a half ago. Um, my father was a, a worship pastor and a youth pastor. Uh, my grandfather was a lay speaker and kind of like a transitional pastor for a lot of churches uh, growing up. Um, I, uh, the short version is this. I lost my father at 16, lost my grandfather at 16, and found Jesus at 17. So uh, the two most influential spiritual men, I could have seeked advice on how to seek him first and, and get after it and soak up from, you know, I dedicated my life to Jesus after they were gone. So I didn't get to pick a lot of the great knowledge from those, uh, from those guys who had been 
seeking Jesus since they were very young. Um, but um, that's just kind of where it, where it fell. At 17, I was um, 17. I accepted Christ. At 19, I was hired and ordained in my uh, first position as a worship pastor at an Assembly of God church, and I was raised United Methodist, so that was a fun change. Um, after that, spent some time uh, worshiping in a bunch of other areas, doing youth worship and leading worship at churches, um, and I've led worship in some capacity for the past 10 years. So um, right after high school, went straight to work, a lot of blue collar work, did some plumbing, uh, did some elevator maintenance, a bunch of stuff that is just weird and a whole bunch of odd jobs. Um, all that to say, I didn't go to seminary. I didn't go to college right after school. I just went straight to work, been working for, a, for a, I say a long time, I'm 27, I can't have been working a long time. Um, but I tell you all this to relay this message. I'm not some brilliant uh, scholar. I'm not some theological guru who uh, has it all figured out by any means. Um, but I can just tell you what the Bible says and show you how I read it and hope that you take it and you learn how to seek him first in your own way based off of how I seek him uh, and share kind of my experiences and we can dive in together through that. Um, so theme verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Um, where is this found? We said it's in Matthew 6, but uh, can someone tell me what is going on in Matthew 6? Any idea at all? Sermon on the Mount. Yes, sir. Bonus point for Zach. Gold star. Um, again, no gold stars. Sorry, kid. Um, so the Sermon on the Mount, it spans from um, – <laughs> another thumbs up from Tony. It, uh, it spans from Matthew 5. To uh, it, it ends in Matthew seven, and it really like he he's walking off the mount in Matthew eight. Um, so spans three chapters. That, that that must be a pretty important thing. It's one of Jesus's first major public teachings, um, and like I said, it, it spans a good amount of the book of Matthew. And so what I want you to grasp is the context of our theme, and I <clears throat> and I want to do it this way. Um, and, and I hope we do it in a way that we can find the answer to our question um, as we go along. So uh, what is the reward of seeking him? Uh, just some, some general ideas uh, before, we, before we dive in. What is the reward of seeking him first? Going to heaven. Going to heaven? Peace. Peace. Restoration. Restoration, that's a good word. So having his plan first in your life. What was that? Having his plan lead your life. Absolutely. So um, I had a very wise person that I look up to um, tell me a long time ago, if you want to know what a Bible verse says, don't, don't just read the verse because you can get a lot of cool things out of reading just a verse. Like, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Doesn't mean I can bench press 600 pounds. You know, Tony's son might be able to, Matthew cannot. It's just not going to happen. Um, however, when I read the context, I might know better what it's saying. So seek him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I want to read the context. And so what I want to do is I know the verse, I know what it says, but I need to read at least 10 verses before and 10 verses after and see what it says. That way I can get a grasp. It's a rule of thumb. I'd say 80% of the time, 90% of the time, you're going to get good context from 10 before, 10 after. Um, and so I'm going to do it like this. Uh, before, 10 verses up would be Matthew 6, 23. Um, in my Bible, it's a that's in the middle of a subsection. So I'm going to round up to the beginning of the subsection and go Matthew 19, um, Matthew 6, 19. And I'm going to give you snippet version of six uh, or sorry of 19 through um 19 through 24 which is one section uh just a real quick snippet i'm going to summarize it and then we're going to tear into 25 through um 34. so uh, mine is labeled treasure in heaven do not store up treasure for yourselves on earth uh where, where moths and vermin destroy um, the whole lesson here is um man 
just that. Don't build up treasure in things of this world. There are things on this world that are to be treasured. People um, are, are God's creation. You should treasure them. Uh, God, the works that he does, treasure that. But the things of this world, your iPhone's going to be obsolete in about two years. Your computer is about to stop, you know, being able to do backgrounds fluently, uh, Chelsea. Uh, <laughs> your, um, you know, just just things. Your 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 clothes are going to tear. Your um, your material possessions are going to end up at, at a dump or a garage sale. Just everything you own, dump, garage sale, whatever. The things of this world don't matter in a eternal sense. So that's not where your treasure is. How big your house is doesn't matter. Um, he goes on to say um, that the eye is uh, the lamp of the body. Um, you know, make sure to be, let it be full of light. That it's full of, full of things that are good. And, and Jesus himself is the light. And it ends with this. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So, um, quick synopsis of that. Somebody read for me uh, Matthew six twenty five through thirty four. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on on it. It is not life more than food. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. How far you want me to go? Uh, to 34. 34, okay. Uh, look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor, ga nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you none more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies on the field how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed, not arrayed like one of these. But if so, if God so clothed the grass on the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much do, do more than clothe you? Or you, O oh, you little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sup, 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 what the world? It's a high point. Oh. Sufficient for the days is its own trouble. Good. Thanks, AJ. Um, so in various different versions, in various, um, various different ways, it says this, verse 25, don't worry about your life. Go to God, Jesus for, for Chelsea and Takiyah. Y'all know my, everything, everything comes back to Jesus. Um, don't worry about your life. Seek him. That's what you need to do. Um, I like the imagery he uses in, um, let's see, 26 through 32, um, the birds, uh, you know, the birds get fed. Your, your, the, the grass is, is going to be pretty, even though it's just thrown into the, into the oven uh, or the lilies for some translations. Those things are going to be taken care of. All you need to worry about is seeking him first. But I do like the language. My, my, uh, my translation, I use the NIV, says this in verse 32. It says, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So, those things are important, but your heavenly Father knows you need them. And so he knows you're going to be taken care of in that way. He, he knows that you will be provided in how he sees fit. It's according to his plan. Seek him first. 
and those things that concern you or that concern him, because when you seek him, you're more concerned about his concerns than your concerns. I know that's a really big circle to wrap your head around, but when you, when you seek him first, his wants, his needs, his desires become your wants, your needs, and your desires for yourself. Thus, in turn, you are just utterly about giving glory to God, and that's what he's about. So um, what you want to do is seek him first, and all these things will be added unto you. The food you need to sustain you to give God glory. The clothes you need to wear to give God glory. The possessions that you need to be adorned with to give God glory. To reach the people that he needs you to reach, he will give you what you need to reach them with. Thirty-three and thirty-four, like we said, are our key. Uh, that that's our background. That's our theme. Um, mine says it this way: "But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well." Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own, and that is one of the biggest key points in this whole passage. Verse thirty-four is something you know. We can, we can look at 33 and out of context, we can go, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All these things, everything in the world, it'll be mine. I don't have to worry about nothing. I just got to seek God and I'm good. I'm going to drive a Bentley. I'm good. But 34 says, don't worry about tomorrow because it will have its own trouble. See, Jesus is speaking here and he doesn't shy away from telling us that just because you're seeking him doesn't mean you'll face trouble. Jesus is not about a lot of prosperity gospel. He cares about your prosperity, but he cares about your prosperity for him. So tomorrow will have its own trouble, but don't worry about it. Let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. Focus on today and how you can see God and what you're doing today. All right, let's dive into, so 34 ends. And remember, this is all part of the Sermon on the Mount. So this is all one big message. So chapter five, six, seven, they all roll together. Um, in a, if the Bible were written like a lot of books today, um, this would all probably be one chapter. So this is all one message. This is all one conversation. So flowing out of six into seven. Um, so seven verse one um, through 12, mine has the, uh, Mine has the, the header, judging others. And this is one of you know, the most quoted sections in today's world. It says, do not judge or you will be judged. Do not, you know, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Am I right? No, I'm not. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> um, God will take care of you. And I uh, got to read my handwriting. Sorry. Um, quick summary of 7, 1 through 12 is this. God will take care of you and, and others. Don't judge where someone else is just because you don't understand what God is doing in them. That's a whole sermon in and of itself, um, and it's important, and I don't want to skip it, um, but I, it, it, it's not really the main point of what I'm trying to make tonight, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, um, but a, a good quote from a pastor that I like to listen to from time to time says, that um, don't, don't worry about other people because where you think their life is falling apart, God may be using it to help them fall into place. And so that's where we're going to sit on judgment. Just don't do it. Just don't judge others. There's a very important reason that this is dropped right in the middle of these two subjects. And I'll point that out kind of towards the end. Um, but I want to move on to... Um, chapter 7 and start in verse 7 and this is where we're going to pick up reading um, sorry i said skip to 12 we're skipping to 7. Uh, someone read matthew 7 um, uh, verse 7 and 8 for me ask and it shall be given you on you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone for everyone that um receiveth and that he and that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it, it shall be opened. Absolutely. So seven uh, Matthew seven seven and seven eight 
are two, like that's one of my favorite back-to-back -back verse sections in the Bible. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And so that, that's just a, a general principle. Hey, do these things and these things will happen. Um, but the reassurance of it in verse eight, for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. So it just reiterates itself back to back, but it uses good, good language there. Um, someone else read uh, nine through 11. Or which one, or which one? if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, know how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So um, we're, we're going to go again with that theme of God knows what you need. Um, like a father to a child, he knows how to care, and these principles are instilled in us on how to care um, for others. So, um, which, which version were you reading, Chelsea? Wait for us, wait for us. Oh, it's the English Standard Version. Yes, V. Um, mine says it this way. Um, <clears throat> Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give, give good gifts to those who ask him? So in, in mine, it kind of sets it up like everyone knows that if your son is hungry, you, you give him a fish. You know, if... if he asks for something, you, you give him something to eat. You don't want to give someone something to harm. That's instilled in you to, to love and to care for one another. Sometimes we have to learn how to do it, um, but it has that language to it. And finally, someone read verse 12 for me. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. All right. Can anyone tell me where else you may have heard that before? Or what does a different translation say? Like what, what does 12 say and, and where have you heard it before? It's the golden rule, golden rule do unto others as you would have done to you. Absolutely. That's it. Man, Zach, you're, you're killing it over here, man. You're taking away all my Q&A time. Um, absolutely. It, it's the golden rule. So taking all that, we just read 10 verses before and 10 verses after um, where we learned, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What do we, uh, what do we take away from that? What do we learn from this? <clears throat> and uh, I guess the, the question is this, now reading what we just read in the Bible, what is the reward for seeking him? And before we answer, I want someone to read just verse 7. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seeking, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Ask, it, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. So what are we seeking? God's uh, word and wisdom. So <clears throat> seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? Um, I didn't want to do a, a huge long rabbit trail of other verses, but I'll give you the, the Cliff Notes version. Um, what is God's kingdom? Heaven. Heaven. What else? What are some other answers? What is God's kingdom? His people. His people, and and who? Okay, that's a that's a better way to word it. Who is God's kingdom? We are. We are. Our neighbors. Our neighbors. The church. The church. Who is who is the head of the church? 
who is the head of the body? Jesus. Christ. Jesus. So what are we seeking? We're seeking to be like Christ. We're seeking to follow Christ. We're seeking Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first Jesus and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So seek first Jesus. What are we seeking? Jesus. 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 So what's our reward for seeking? Because if we seek and we find and we're seeking this, Jesus. what's our reward? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Takiya, your phone has an awesome ring to it. All I hear is Jesus, 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 Jesus. But it's in way high pitched tones. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> it's because Chelsea and I are in the same room. <laughs> That's fair. So, so seeking him first, Jesus is what we're seeking. And Jesus is our reward. Because if we seek Jesus, we will find Jesus. And, and he is our reward. So, so think about this. Jesus is enough. That's our reward. Period. Point blank. He's enough. Um, a very popular verse by itself is Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Jesus. Boom. According to his riches in Jesus. And a lot of people think, man, if I love Jesus, he'll give me all that I need. But in context of what Paul is saying in there, we find out, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in Jesus. Jesus is the riches. So Jesus is the reward. Jesus is what we seek. And I want to tell you that um, because of this. He is the answer. He is our reward. And he will, uh, he is all our needs and he is our supply. And, and, and drenched in our answer and in our search for Jesus, we find also an overshadowing um, concept in, in two and a half big things. Um, what's the reward? He is. How do we seek him? We follow his commands. We listen to his word, right? Um, so, real simple, without cheating, without looking, who can tell me the two greatest commands Jesus ever gave? Uh, love, uh, Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And love God. Love God. So uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your ways acknowledge him. So love the Lord your God, which all you have. And love your neighbor as yourself. So um, when I speak, I have, I have three rules um, that I, that I want to end almost every, um, ev every conversation, every gospel conversation. Uh, I, have, I have three rules that I like to use and that I like to instill in people. And uh, overly simplistic. Um, and I believe that, that, that God and Jesus uh, gave us the two great commandments and one warning. Um, and, and these are my three rules for following Jesus. And I wanna, I wanna share these with you. And then we'll, we'll talk about practical ways we can do this because remember, this is our reward is, is seeking Jesus. Once we seek him, we find him. And when we find him, we have fellowship and we fellowship with him and we learn his ways. We learn his wants. And then we give that to others because the greatest commandments are love God and love your neighbor. So those two are easy. Rule number one, love God, seek him, know him, serve him embrace him, read his word, spend time in his word, and love on him and glorify his name. See, you know, love God. That's rule number one. Rule number two, love people. Matthew 7, 12, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. So rule number one, love God. Rule number two, love people. And this one made Tony laugh when I told him earlier. Rule number three, don't be an idiot. It's simple as that. Love God and love people. And spoiler, if you're doing the first two, you won't have time to do the third one. If you do the first two with all that you have, you don't have time to be an idiot. Now, I fail every day. 
I, I might as well have it written on my forehead. I thought about actually doing it, but I don't. Um, rule number one, love God. Rule two, love people. Rule three, uh, don't be an idiot. Um, but this reminds us that, um, that following him is, is easier than we think. Um, it, it's really that simple but we get it wrong so many times because we have this build up in our mind that in order to follow God, I have to be perfect because God is perfect. So if I'm following God, I've got to be, you know, I got to dress to the nines to go to church. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got to be blameless. You know, I've got to make sure I was living right. Cause you know, we get this almost uh, uh, like Greek mindset to ourselves where like God is Zeus and if we're not perfectly righteous and walk into his church, he's sitting there with a lightning bolt just ready to strike us down. And that's not the God we serve. Um, God loves us plain and simple. And that means he knows who you are and he doesn't know who you are perfectly. He, he you're not perfect. So he doesn't know I perfect you. He knows the you he made you just how he made you. And that's perfect in his mind. That's perfect in his sight. He knows you have flaws. He knows you're not going to be all right. Um, so this is the overarching message. Our reward for seeking him is Jesus. In a very short two-minute spiel, while we are not perfect, God sent Jesus, died on a cross, a couple Sundays ago, we celebrated that he didn't just die and get put in the grave, but he rose again. We, we talked about seeking him in the power of the resurrection a few weeks ago. Sent his son, Jesus, died on a cross, rose three days, ascended to heaven, and sent his spirit to be with us as we do life. So if we're seeking out this God, if we're seeking out Jesus, who's his son and his head of the church, we'll find him. And the Bible says it gives us his spirit that lives inside us and makes us new. The more we dwell in his word together, the more we absorb his word together, um, we'll have fellowship with one another and we'll be able to uh, strengthen each other. You know, a lot of people know iron sharp and iron relationships. Those are good things. Um, so uh, in a real quick, just for humor me, because I like participation quite a bit. Um, Tony, what's our reward for seeking him? You didn't hold your, 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 uh, your space bar. I think you just tapped it, but I saw you mouth Jesus. Ryan. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Ryan, what's our reward for seeking him? Jesus. Kristen, what's our reward for seeking him? Jesus. That's right. Chelsea, what's our reward? Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. AJ. Jesus. Trip, what's our reward for seeking him? Jesus. There it is. Takia, get ready for the ring, y'all. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, there was no ring that time. That was nice. And I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any of y'all like pop up. Wait, no, I have. Zach, what's our reward for seeking him? Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Kendra? Jesus. Yeah. Imelda, are you there? What's our reward? There it is. Ben, Paul, Abigail. Jesus. You get it. So what's our reward for seeking him with all we have? Jesus. You you get what you're looking for. Ryan. <laughs> Spider-Man. You, you get what you're looking for. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So if there's any one thing that I can tell you that we get added to us, what is the reward for seeking him? Jesus. And it's all in your Bible. How to seek him, what seeking him looks like. We've talked about it in weeks past. You know, I like mine. It's nice. It's leather. It's got little thumb tabs. doesn't matter what yours looks like. It could be a phone. Um, I recommend using an actual Bible because you can write in it, make notes, look at it a few years from now, see what the notes you made. But our reward is Jesus. And so I want to take just a second. And last week, um, we talked a little bit about 
what people are going to be doing online. And I've seen a few of them on the, uh, on the BCM's page of sharing their testimonies um, over the next few weeks. And testimonies are a very important, very, very big thing. And it's your biggest tool. It is your single biggest asset you can have on your side when you want to share someone about Jesus. Because as much as you can tell them about the things he did for others, nothing will mean more and shine more about what he's done for you. So that being said, I want you to think about this, and, and this doesn't have to necessarily be a discussion point, but um, think about this. What has Jesus done for you in a time when uh, the world is a little bit chaotic? Um, you know, people don't know when they're going back to work. You don't know what, what school looks like. I know we've got seniors, we've got um, freshmen, and everyone's world is just kind of upside down a little bit. Um, what, what does Jesus look like for you? And what does is, what is seeking him look like for you in this season? Um, and that's something we can discuss. How are you seeking him now? Now that you have time, assumedly, I know a lot of people are doing online school um, and, and getting ready for testing and having a whole lot of fun. Um, but what does seeking him look like for you now that your social time has been taken from you, that your events that you have planned, that the things you fill up your calendar with, how are you seeking him and what has been your reward or what will be your reward when you make that change now that you have time? Because a lot of our excuse 90% of the time is, man, I just get so busy. I forget to read my Bible. Well, if you get too busy now, I'm impressed. So, <laughs> cause I've started braiding my hair and uh, that, that just shouldn't happen. What, what are ways, uh-huh, got to laugh from AJ. I'll count it, that'll work. And Chelsea's covering her face. So um, what, are, what are ways that we can seek Jesus? What are, what are things that we can do in this time where we are today that will help us seek Jesus? And what is the reward for seeking him where we are now? Well, um, opening up our Bible and reading his word and basically praying every day, like, as their example, like during meals, during, um, like during meals, during, before and after bed, that kind of thing. And then also, um, what did you say? You said the reward? Yeah. Yeah. What, what do we, what's the reward for that? Um, well, we, we, um. Jesus um respects us. I mean, he always respects us, though. I mean, he he um Jesus respects us, and um I mean, not not that. Oh, let me think. Sorry. Um. Okay, so um, God is um or Jesus. I don't know. Can't think of one. Sorry. He hears us. So you said we're gonna. We're going to pray. We're going to dive in his word. What happens when we dive in his word? We learn his word. We get to know him better. I'm sorry. I've got sirens that are a little loud. At least they're loud right here. They're right by highway. All right. So what's our reward for seeking him? We get to know him better. We get to know the God that saved us. Those are simple things. We, we have fellowship with him through prayer. Um, if y'all haven't looked at the group chat um, or you can't see the group chat for any reason, uh, Kristen's over here one up in me um, spouting some straight fire. And so I can read that out loud or Kristen, if you want to unmute yourself and read that, um, that's solid. So um, I just said that one other thing I've been told about testimonies is that it's the one thing others can't tell you is false. They can tell you that they don't believe in the gospel or they don't believe in Jesus all day long, but they can't argue your personal story of what God has saved you from, what he's restored you, how he's restored you, because that's your experience with God. That's the strongest tool that you have. Yes, that you need to point them to the gospel. You need to point them to scripture to back up your testimony. But your testimony is the one thing they can't argue against. Good. That's good, sis. That's good. And so, 
I guess the, the best way I know to kind of end this is, is simply this. Um, how do we get a testimony? And I, and I think, you know, the, the leadership team has talked about, um, the leadership team has talked about how they're going to do things moving forward and through the summer, or I may be speaking out of turn on that. I don't know what the plan is week by week, but what I do know is that for now we've been talking about seeking him first in every aspect of our life. And now we're talking about the reward. So, so this leads to this, how do we seek him in all these things and what's the reward for doing it? The reward is a testimony. It's one of the, the, the rewards that we can get. It's not the reward, but it's a byproduct of what we get. We seek Jesus. We get to see what he does. And, um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the book of Acts. Um, the book of Acts says that we will be his witnesses, um, that we will be the Spirit's witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Um, and, and, and that passage alone, and without going into too much detail, our testimony is what allows us to be a witness. Um, that, just to give you a little snippet, Jerusalem is where they were, so you get to be his witness where you are. Um, Judea is, it was their neighbors that they loved dearly, so you get to be a witness to the people near you that you love dearly. Samaria was the people they hated. Straight up hated the Samaritans. They were half-breeds, they hated them, they were weird, they didn't like them, go live in another town. You get to be God's witnesses to the people you don't even like, and then to the ends of the earth. So what is the reward for seeking him? Jesus. And how do you tell people about Jesus? Your testimony. So. All that to say, Jesus. And beat me to it. <laughs> so that, that's what I got, Tony. Well, the good, the good thing about that is, you know, when, when we seek Jesus, we get Jesus and we become more like Jesus. That is our testimony. We're more like him. And so that's, it's a progressive thing. You know, it started for me when I became 11, when I entered into a relationship with Jesus, but it continued today when I woke up, you know, this trying to get to know him even more so I could be more like him because I, I know it's hard for y'all to believe I'm not perfect yet. Um, you talk to my wife, she'll tell you that. But anyway, uh, the process of becoming saved is something we do every day. So I'm still in that process of being more like Jesus. There is going to come a day though, when we're going to be completely perfected because that is the thing that he does. He, perf he is in the process of perfecting us. We're not perfect, but he is perfecting us. And that will be ultimately happen when we get to heaven. So it's this great process. And the reward is knowing him more. I was just thinking about a couple of things. One, um, since I have more time on my hands, um, I've been enjoying reading the gospel. So, you know, y'all know, I studied Matthew for like a year and a half. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go on to Mark. And so I read Mark in like a week. And so now I'm in Luke and um, I'm, I'm just going to read through the gospels. And, and it's just been real encouraging to see things that I know that are there, but because I'm spending time with it, it it's coming more real. Just a second ago, uh, when the siren came by, um, I want to just make an observation. We all knew it was the siren. It was loud we could hear it. But you know, even when a siren is soft, we can still hear it. Here's the reality. We have time right now. That siren's blowing all the time. Jesus is blowing the siren. We just got to take the time to listen to it. And sometimes it's kind of like the siren that's a little annoying to us. We don't really want it. But the reality is a siren's good because that's somebody coming to help somebody that needs something. So we all need that siren to be blowing up in our lives and us listening to it. So anyway, just the thought from the siren a while ago. Um, and we have opportunities for God to speak to us. He's speaking all the time. We just really need to listen. So anyway, I'm going to shut up for a second. Somebody else might have something they want to add. That's a good word. Man, that's a good word. Um, I would say for me, um, lately it's been um, a lot of what we spoke about at the beginning of the semester, just showing it all the meaning, just obviously getting back into this word, but this time it's been. Can we hear you, sis. You can hear me. What? So, I'm like someone in the portal. Tight. 
type, type yours in the, in the in the group message if you can. Because you uh, you sound possessed. <laughs> you sound like you need me. I sound. Like Hello. So funky. Well, I don't know how to fix that. Hey, you sound like an '80s disco song. You sound like T Pain music. That's my belly. Good night. <laughs> okay. By the way, if you if you have the ability to open the group message, I strongly recommend doing so. Kristen over here, here spouting great fire yet again. No. Kendra. Hello. Type is in because you sound like TP. <laughs> we all hear them like you sound like a stat like static. Yeah. Okay. Sound like a bad voice changer at like a kidnapping movie. Like <laughs> just you will give me the the ransom. Are you on your phone? Kendra? Are you on your phone? Hello. Is that a yes? Can you hear me? We, we can, can hear something. you. That's not the problem. We cannot understand the words that you're saying because they sound like Go into the light. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus, for those words. <laughs> All right, I'll actually say this one instead of typing it. Um, whenever we were talking, it's it's a bit of a rabbit trail. You have to hang with me for a second. But when we're talking in Matthew six thirty two, for the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your heavenly father's heavenly father knows that you need them all. So God already knows what we need. He already knows what we want. And it, anytime we talk about stuff like that, it always reminds me of Psalms 37, four that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What that verse doesn't mean is that we'll get whatever we want. But when we delight ourselves in him, when we're seeking him, when we're and our reward of seeking him is him, is Jesus. And we continue to seek him, continue to delight ourselves in him our desires and our wants will align with his plan for our life. So the more that we seek him, the more that we have that relationship with him, the more our life will look like his plan for us. All right, guys, I don't know if anybody else has anything else they want to add or not. We can hang around as long as we want to. I have been recording this. I'm going to officially end the recording right now, and then we can just chat about some of the stuff that's coming up.